it, it was looking like a movie scene he stripped her naked and then some ayate was done and then some holy water has been thrown on her her and then they started beating and she is shouting when she is screaming out of the pain and people are shouting and cherishing the name of the god saying that the satan is going out from her body no bro it's not you are beating a 16 year old kid stripping her naked hanging her from a ceiling 300 400 people are being witnessing this they are watching it happening it's not she's screaming out of pain she's screaming out of the shame that you are bringing it to her it's not exorcism i'm sorry if 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 this is how exorcisms happen this is not an exorcism in these 17 years of my exile you know what i've realized god is there ghost is there they are both there only us we people we are not trying we are trying to give them shapes and sizes we are trying to give them some sort of identity on the ranveer show we keep bringing you horror specials this is another horror special from someone who some would say is a skeptic when it comes to ghosts or horror or the occult in general jailani someone who's dedicated his life to the paranormal and he's not a complete skeptic he likes proving narratives wrong but that doesn't mean that he doesn't believe in the paranormal jailani's work can be found on youtube it can be found on podcast so if you know who he is this one's a deep dive into his mind and if you don't know who jailani is he's a paranormal investigator I will definitely tell you that this is a man with stories and I hope that you enjoy this conversation with someone that some people might consider a skeptic I consider a human living through life acknowledging the paranormal and its possible existence he's not a skeptic for me but he is a paranormal investigator in its truest sense this is Jayalani's outlook broken down For more episodes just like this, make sure you follow the Renvi show on Spotify. We're a Spotify exclusive. Every episode's available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. This is Jayalani on the Renvi show. Jayalani brother welcome to the Ranveer show thank you so much Ranveer thank you for having me here it's a pleasure to be here how's it going all well all ghosts are behind me <laughs> <laughs> wow um man we were looking for people who could speak about these kind of topics because it's something that listeners love hearing mm-hmm. um let's begin with a heavy question at the top straight all away right. let's let's go for it which is that uh, what has been the one single most intense experience you have had in this whole journey of paranormal investigation mm. i've been called to witness an exorcism uh in in a small place called maner it is near patna in bihar and uh, i saw this 16 17 year old girl uh getting exorcised by few people who claim themselves to having supernatural powers and they can make it easy for her uh when i witnessed that particular exorcism that is something that i can never forget because uh, they hanged this girl from the ceiling they made her stripped naked and then they started beating her from this blooms and the sticks and uh, slaps and what not can can you describe it a little more in terms of what was she like before the exorcism well when uh, i i i got a call from her brother basically and uh, he told me that uh, jay if you if you want to witness a true exorcism because you say the possessions don't happen uh, you should come here so i said fine i would definitely would love to join and i was in in delhi at that moment and uh, patna is another hometown to me so it was very easy for me to travel i went and uh, maner the the place that i'm talking about it is around 60 kilometers from patna so i took my car went to uh, drove down to this place and uh, i met this girl in the evening i would i would not name it uh, in the evening around 8 8:30 so i entered inside the home it was an old home and uh, he took me to her room where she was tied with this uh, you know what do you call it 
Khatiya and she was tired and she was badly bruised uh, there was bruises on her face there were bruises on her shoulder and she was a little girl like 16 17 tied tied to a bed basically yeah, sort tied of bed. to a tied to a bed and the room was in a very pathetic condition it was smelly it was very bad and i went to her and i i tried to speak to her and uh, she uttered few words okay. and uh, she tr- she tried to say that i am good you know so fine i i went to her brother and said, what is this why are you guys doing this i just said this is the matter of uh, something very religious so let's should not get into it let's not touch it let the elders decide of the family whatever they they want to do when is the exorcism is happening this is happening tomorrow night so can you stop it you know when exorcism in india especially in a in a small village of that kind happens no one enters no one dares to enter or say even a word because there are thousands of people who are believing in it no police no law situation nothing can stop it if it is meant to happen it will happen and that will happen to you know in in the evening we we reached around this place where uh, she was when i saw f- her for the first time she entered people took her inside they hanged her tied her hands and then hanged her from the ceiling and uh, then some islamic things the tantra mantra ritual that started happening i don't know what they call it in uh, i guess ayate or something like that so and then this this person who was supposedly the leader of the exorcist group the first thing he did that he stripped her naked in front of like around 300 400 people there surrounding this entire thing everyone is having uh, a fire in their hands for someone is having candles no bulb no electricity was used i don't know why no electricity was used it, it was looking like a movie scene you know and he stripped her naked and then some ayate was done and then some holy water has been thrown on her her and then they started beating and she is shouting when she is screaming out of the pain and people are shouting and cherishing the name of the god saying that the satan is going out from her body no bro it's not you are beating a 16 year old kid stripping her naked you know uh, hanging her from a ceiling 300 400 people are being you know witnessing this they are watching it happening it's not she's screaming out of pain she's screaming out of the shame that you are bringing it to her it's not exorcism i'm sorry if 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 this is how exorcisms happen this is not an exorcism so you know when i witnessed that of course i couldn't do anything i went and i tried to look next morning i went and tried to speak to local police and administration this i'm sorry we cannot do anything it's a matter of belief and the belief of a huge community that stays there things can be very violent if you if you try to interfere in a matter like this so you know these there are kind of experiences that will always remain with me until i, I die because what i have seen will never go out of my mind so my experiences are like that they are not good or bad or best it's just a few experiences that i can never forget um what happened to the girl she is still alive fortunately or i would say unfortunately uh this case is of uh, around 2017 it's been around 5 years but she is uh, not what she was she speaks uh, she does not speak she is very silent people have uh, tried to married her off but she don't uh, she has tried according to her brother i still speak to uh, her brother sometimes just to get an update she has tried uh, committing suicide for a couple of times uh, somehow she managed but it might be a bad thing or a sad thing to say but i'll tell you now she won't live long somehow or the other she will pass away not because of the ghosts not because of any paranormal entity but because of the kind of bruises this human have given to her 
either she commits suicide either she dies of any uh, anything else but she won't live long mm. and somehow she knows it she knows it that is why she's like she has lost all the interest in life any kind of interest she eats she does three things only she eats uh she goes to the farm to work she comes back she eats and she she sleeps that's all that is all her, her life have been so far what does a paranormal investigator do uh there are two versions of it okay one the world believes and one people like me or joe nickel we believe we are here to tell the realities to people to make the world a better place I'll give you an example. The first paranormal investigators in the entire world, what I believe, was Illuminati. When it happened in 1776, the Illuminati was find, founded by Adam Bischoff in Germany. He had three primary things to do. Number one, to reduce the forced religiousness over the people. Number two, people who are practicing black magic, blind faith, and superstitions. to stop them and number 3 to question to the people who are sitting in the authorities that why this is happening so for me uh, paranormal the first paranormal investigators were those people adam bischoff although it's a crazy thing that we have funny stories about the illuminati why don't you tell us a little bit about the illuminati well illuminati yes was a group that was uh, built by adam bischoff in germany out of a church but all these secret society we have and this is uh, uh, illuminati controls everything that happens in the world and all those stuff i do not believe it that is true uh, illuminatis have been a people who have really worked hard for the people mm. on ground they have helped a lot of people during the american civil war illumin the people uh, group people from the group of illuminatis they have come really on ground you know while businessmen from america america they were trying to create ouija boards as the patents uh they were trying to make it as a as a something that is commercial they were selling the ouija boards because at that time people especially americans were going through a very emotional damage they were losing people this was the time when people were having 12 12 kids in the families because the loss rate was so high mm. during the american civil war so very less people know that uh, illuminatis have really worked on the grounds to cut down the blind faith and superstitions and everything that they could do at that time where do you think this narrative about uh, secret society and all comes into play do you think this is pro- religious propaganda this is what i believe uh, uh, religious propaganda one yes uh, and two what i believe that see we we as humans we cannot stay without we cannot live without stories we have to keep making stories just to keep us alive mm. that is how we function you know i i i always say that everything in this world is mortal except stories only stories are immortal even if there will be no earth there will be stories of earth on the other planet <laughs> wow mm. you know so we have to keep making stories in order to make us feel that we are alive new stories are born every single second mm. so what i believe that stories of illuminatis have been made someone has said something and then someone picked out of it something and then a, another version is created uh, but what i believe also the third part whatever i have read and have gone through that that there were people who wanted to stop illuminatis because illuminatis were the people who were directly harming the business of blind faith they were directly harming it especially businesses of ouija boards 1898 was the first time when the patent of ouija boards was was registered and till this date it is a multi million business especially ouija boards ouija board boards were called kids you know you go to usa you go to um, countries like land uh, cities like london or anywhere else you will find kids are playing with ouija boards mm. and one ouija board it cost you around a good 100 dollars and there have been 
a businesses of blind faith in the entire world not only in india especially what i believe that americans they are more into blind faith <laughs> okay they have their own certain rules of it but they are more into it mm. so these business giants have tried to stop illuminati they did not stop so they made stories that is making them a part of it right before we started you spoke about some black magic experience yeah. to me are you comfortable yeah. sharing it yeah, yeah, yeah. uh firstly what is black magic and you're a person who's traveled the world so i'm sure you've encountered some aspects of black magic even abroad uh i'm asking you about black magic in general do you believe that magic exists because people say that magic exists for those who believe that it does the first time when i saw black magic happening was in a ghat near varanasi you know and uh, what i believe that there were a lot of people who believed in it they spent like good amount of money what did you see i saw someone performing some sort of black magic that is helping them come out of their money issues but what was the black magic it like was a uh, a typical ritual surrounded by skulls and everything and there was a guy who was just performing all these things for me it was i at that time i had no depth idea about it i'm just just standing and looking at things and it it looks like movies you know uh, it, it looked like movie scene to me where this guy is performing all these things where you have sindoor you have uh, uh, uh flowers you have um, candles and then skull everything is red and this guy is just covered with red sindoor entirely and there are two people who are sitting just like this <clears throat> and uh, this guy is chanting some mantras and all that and this is what is happening this this went around 20 25 minutes and then this guy suddenly stands up and he says that fine your work will be done you'll be very soon out of all of these things this was my first encounter with actual black magic when i'm looking at it you know and all those uh, people who don't know all sorts of black magic it happens the opposite side of manikarnika ghat in varanasi the other side of ganga the opposite side yeah the other side of ganga the other bank yeah. okay 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 you like you cross over you cross over the, the river and go to the other and go to the other side wow okay vlog content this yeah. is good hmm. so <laughs> it's and you will find many people there for people who have come for it and for people who are doing it and it happens only at night or throughout the day any time you want okay only not during the uh, the rains but it is happening most of the times the best time would be like from uh, december and january hmm yeah and there are different kind of packages they deal with like if you have a small penis fine it will they'll do the job a small penis yeah they'll do the job if you are like not it'll, rich it will stretch out your <laughs> dick <laughs> yeah a okay. lot of things that are happening and then if you are like uh, someone who is not rich and wants to be rich not good in studies breakups they have problems uh, solutions for everything that you go through in life do you think any of these guys are real no not even mm, one not even one you've gone and like had a conversation I with have them conversation once i'll tell you a story about it i got to know about this guy who is saying that you know by using some sort of black magic i can end anyone's life like setting miles away this so this sounds very interesting this is a new challenge that i've come uh, come up with so me becoming becoming dhirendra kumar so any dhirendra who is listening to it i'm not becoming you mm. i just picked out a random name you know i am i i become dhirendra kumar went to varanasi i have many relatives in varanasi so I, i i know the varanasi thing really well inside out so i went around uh, 11 o'clock met these people this is this this one guy who is troubling me troubling me very much who is it his name is jay alani you know he's like after my career and everything can you do something he asked me like 25000 so done when should i come so come tomorrow the next day i went there now there's a, there's a ritual that needs to be performed where i have to be naked and uh, the other two people 
who are into the ritual they also will, will they will be naked so all three of them will be naked and there will be three four three or four more people who will be arranging the stuff all tantras mantras uh, all sorts of flowers sindoor skulls uh, bones whatever it's needed i said this looks very interesting but i cannot so i'm sorry i cannot be naked said, you have to be I said, okay at least give me my underwear they said fine okay have it this ritual happened around for one and a half hour but what they make you do they first make me do some uh, mantras chanting and all that and then they gave me this uh, a bone shaped sort of bowl you know and they told me that go have water from the ganga for like 21 times you know and put it here and then they had uh, some blood of some animal so they covered me with the blood they made me uh, take a bath on it and all that stuff it is it, it is like a movie scene it's totally a movie scene and i am do just intentionally doing it whatever they are saying it not even one wrong move i did not want to give them an opportunity that you you did not do this correctly and i and this the one guy who is a leader of the group he is sitting around 10 meters ahead far from what is happening and he is having his own drinks and everything he is very sorted on that note for one one and a half hour it goes so fine your work will be done in next 3 days and it's been around 3 years i'm here alive sitting in front of like you, you did a ritual to kill yourself my, my like the guy jay alani yeah. wow okay and i've taken more risks like that and with the same results with the same results but nothing happened uh, heard about vashikaran so vashikaran is um, i don't know what to say vashikaran is is something where you can have your dream girl you know just you you perform these black magic and you can have your dream girl or a dream boy you know must must have seen a lot of ads on indian newspapers social media and all the manchaha var paaye kanya paaye and all that stuff and i'll tell you a shocking fact about them i have the phone recording of one such person although i have been there i've also mentioned it in my podcast multiple times so i have become a guy who is 22 23 years old and just want to have my favorite girl in my life i reached out to this guy and said baba let's do the vashikaran thing uh, he said it will start from 5100 and goes for like 75000 which package do you want so what is the differentiation between the packages you know from 5000 my new chances to 75000 100% chance so let's go for 75000 then because i i just love her you know i i just don't want to see her go so please make it happen the conversation begins begins i sent him some money he started he wanted a picture of the girl i sent one of my friends picture she's the one and all of course uh, with her permission and all that stuff started happening and you know what he advises me at the end of the ritual he says and can, can i say that in hindi because it will make yeah, sure. more sense he says beta usko kahin bahar le jao ghumao firao aurat ka man aisa hota hai aur kya hai na ki ek baar uski yoni mein samao kyunki jab tak tum wo nahi karoge tab tak result nahi aayega he said travel with her uh put the uh, show her good time and then have sex with her so that uh, you can get her to love you and when i said that it is not possible she does not even talks to me how can i get to have sex with her and then this guy's best line comes up do it by hook or crook make her drink something you know today's time there's a lot of things that are available in the market so this guy is uh, telling me to rape her hmm. directly and it's not me thousands of indian youth from the small cities or people like them they get into these traps hmm and to your surprise many rapes happens because of this yeah it's why you shouldn't be a blind believer in anything related anything. to the occult and i'm i'm someone 
who loves learning more about the occult i love this topic but you need to know where to check yourself exactly. also and and face the ground reality i think that's what you're trying to do through your work that's what i'm trying to do I'm what still surprises me is that you're not <coughs> completely a skeptic no because anyone who hears this conversation will think you're like almost 100% skeptic but then you're not i'm not i'm focused on the 20% which makes you an unskeptic i am not because you know uh, the experiences that i have already told you that makes me believe that there is something that is beyond my knowledge okay and i'm open to have it are you are you familiar with topics like the astral world i am astral projections and other things i have uh, had my own say on it i mean own read on it but uh, for me the most prime positive power is is someone whom we call god you know so i just have my faith and and uh, interestingly i do not have a figure of uh, of god in my head have you been to bangalore i'm 17 7 8 times would you like to describe it a little bit because it's supposed to be india's most haunted place Let's yeah it is it is and you you feel it's haunted yeah it is let's talk about it it is haunted by people <laughs> trust okay. me humans have haunting it so badly that it is now is the most most commercial haunted location of india thousands of people go every day they step inside they get disappointed they come back and they say we will never go again mm. you know because there is nothing in bhangar it is not a fort or something you should have realized it go check the history people first it is not a fort it is a structure that was built for a queen and the king made it just to you know uh, to go for huntings and other things the people that they say bhangar was uh, uh, the capital of rajasthan yes it was but bhangar fort was not the operating area mm. the entire region called bhangar at that time now there's only a fort that you see have you traveled all over the world where you've encountered things and again i'm asking you about the 20% of you yeah. which is a believer yeah. uh because that's honestly what listeners also want to listen to like i think your point about all these things mainly not being real has come across people have understood it but you're not completely a skeptic have you had experiences abroad which again push you towards being a believer i was in uruguay uh, the capital is montevideo hmm and uh, there's a local paranormal investigation group that operates the name of the guy is gustavo hmm so gustavo came to meet me when he got to know that i am there he came to meet me in my hotel it was a lovely meeting and uh, he also presented me you know a souvenir and made me the special ambassador for uruguayan paranormal association and all that stuff gustavo came up with uh, uh, his wife and a little kid you know must be around 10 months or 12 months a little guy they left and uh, once they left i came out of the hotel the uh, just to have a smoke smoking was not allowed in the hotel premises so i came out now just bang opposite there's a beach so i i i started smoking and i walked around the beach so i went to this beach and uh, there's one man around him in his 70s just sitting on the shore and looking at the and somehow you know when you see people you know that they are sad or they might be feeling lonely so i just walked up to him uh it is totally okay to talk to strangers abroad <laughs> like it's totally okay it's in india there's a lot of things that how can you talk to him it's totally okay so i walked up to him i sat next to him and uh, i said uh, hey how about smoke so yeah thanks man. he was looking homeless I said yeah thanks man so he picked up a cigarette from my box uh, i lighted up uh, for him and he started smoking i said and uh, are you okay i said are you okay and then this guy says you know what is life i said no sir i do not life is a lot of things and yet nothing these are the exact words and i am just quoting it I said, whatever you said has a deep meaning. I can relate to it. I can understand. 
but why are you saying it i said because i feel like dying yet i am forced to live you know what is forcing you to live my family so go back to your family this guy goes silent absolutely silent after around uh, i guess a good silence of 5 6 minutes you know once i raped a girl near argentina border it's been 17 years i have come out and i'm not gathering that courage to go back to my family to face them so this guy apparently is coming out from jail after 17 years and sitting in the capital of montevideo is a street called ramla on a beach like ramla openly so then in these 17 years of my exile you know what i've realized so please tell me god is there ghost is there they are both there only us we people we are not trying we are trying to give them shapes and sizes we are trying to give them some sort of identity so this guy apparently sounded very much um, uh deep in i mean it felt like that he has gone to analyze himself throughout the years in exile and then this guy stands up he goes up he walks out this conversation if you look has no meaning it has no meaning but why i am telling you this conversation that i have met people like him many a times where they have changed entirely from what we, they were that makes me sometimes believe that there is something that is also changing humans for the good apparently i am a total believer you can say like complete believer of everything of whatever people say is just that i have my own way of seeing things you know they say that if you feel a lack of anything you give out more of it in the world yeah yeah so it it might have happened because of uh, you know i was four and a half when i was sent to boarding so there was a, a feeling of um, attention and all these things that has been there with me mm. but with time it has now gone and i am giving all these things to people but i'm missing that me sometimes maybe maybe you'll find it through more exploration yeah, mr alan maybe <laughs> maybe maybe this was a heavy episode oh well thank very you. heavy thank you uh, so much i hope you had fun on the show and Great fun. Uh, hoping to have you again after you've accumulated even more experiences <laughs> and more nds for great oh, podcast content oh well thankfully i mean i'm not wishing for nds <laughs> no, or i know i'm I know. wishing for you surviving oh, the yeah, nds yeah. so thank you mr thank alan thank you so much sir this episode was different i know we usually host people on this show who are very convinced about their paranormal experiences but i feel perspectives like this are important as well while it's fantastic to ask more questions about the paranormal it's also important to acknowledge perspectives like jayalani's perspective i disagreed with him in many of the points that he put across i feel like human reality is extremely subjective everyone's minds are capable of perceiving or undergoing or seeing different levels of reality that's something i've learned through the podcast uh through talking to people like shri m ambika devi other paranormal themed episodes of the ranveer show but i definitely acknowledge jayalani's perspective because he's someone who's put himself in those strange situations for most strange episodes just like this make sure you follow the ranveer show on spotify with a spotify exclusive every episodes available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world many horror episodes will come up very soon on the ranveer show so stay tuned <laughs>